Um, if, if we'd like, let's get, go ahead and get started again. And uh, we've got um, social services. And I know you by face, and I'm terrible with names. I'm I so as sorry. Well, that's all right. I'm Deanna Cheat. I'm the director, of course, over there. Hello. Hey. You changed your hair, didn't you? I did, so don't get used to it because it could change your hair. <laughs> <laughs> so Which will just confuse you even product. more, exactly. You'll think, I think I know her, but that's not the hair. <laughs> yes, it Perfectly is. all right. Thank you for coming. Absolutely. So I will jump right in unless yeah. you guys want me to do something otherwise and please feel free since we've only got 10 minutes and I'll try not to be an auctioneer but please feel free to slow me down or you know ask me questions anywhere along the line. Um, you all of course have a copy of the budget before you so I'll just go over some of our big ticket items so to speak and then some of the other ones that maybe you all aren't maybe quite as familiar with, with um, the department. Um, of course, the very first one there is our salaries and benefits coming in at a little bit over $2.9 And you can see from just the description that's there that that represents what our actual costs are for our current staff employees and for any potential new hires that will be coming on for vacancies where we start at. Now, where are you reading? I, I'm on the budget 2021. It's okay. the one that has administration. It's the... the oh, okay. The, the call out page. Sorry. Okay. No, no, no worries. And this is the... the uh, if you look to the left, the far left, you'll see those nice long list of numbers. Those are our laser reporting numbers. So that's what we're looking at budget lines. So right now, I was just speaking of 51,000 or you know, double zeros if, you, <laughs> if you'd like to. Um, but that does represent what our actual salaries are right now. That also includes our increase for our VRS and for health insurance that's estimated at the moment. If you'll come down to 53150, which is under legal, um, our original amount there was actually quite a bit higher, but you can see that Caitlin's hanging out over there in the corner, and Caitlin is our, we're tagging her in more and more right now, so we've adjusted that down uh, several thousand dollars to $80,000. What we done in the past was Neil Knudsen um, was a, a, a contracted attorney that we use for our specific DSS cases. Um, we do need to have somebody that has knowledge and, and specializes in DSS cases, whether it's foster care or chins or protective orders, anything along those lines. And Neil, I add that Neil's as good as they come. He is, absolutely. Neil is um, based out of Manassas. We're fortunate that he stuck with us. He was Winchester. He was in Winchester. And he, he, he's fantastic. And He's taken on, um, and, and I don't say task as in it's a difficult task because certainly Caitlin is more than knowledgeable, but he has been kind of training and mentoring Caitlin so that she'll be able to handle our foster, all of our, our agency specific um, cases um, so that it's not just that it's, we can't necessarily just have a, a county attorney that has absolutely no knowledge of, of, of family services and, and we run into some of that those issues daily. Um, so. Caitlin is tagging on in, and we're looking at by the end of the year, October, end of the year, that um, Neil will actually, it, it pains me to say, but that Neil will be out. Of course, I'm sure we can consult with him if we needed to. Does any state funds go come to help pay her when she's over on? It, it does. We do get some as far as our administration that comes in to help pay for it, so it's not all, um, and you can see kind of the breakout on the um, so uh, we are looking at that eighty thousand dollars is por is a portion of what we're using for Neil's um, uh, not salary but for Neil's payment when he's working on our cases and then of course for for Caitlin. You'll also see um, coming down to fifty five four twenty for our rent and building. We do have a rent increase that's already built into the contract um, for our building. My neighbor was just in here for over voter registrar, so for our new building, we do have an increase that's going in, and that's January. And that's rent that comes to us. I was going to say yes, that we, we're the we're <laughs> the really comes back, Absolutely. Yeah. That was well, technically, that's that. a good thing. And, that. and part of that's part of that state money and parts local. It is. Okay. Yeah. That is. So we use it as revenue. It's it's re, it's reimbursing the we loaned ourselves the money to do the renovation for health department and social services and that's being and that's our portion okay that's our portion of it um, along those same lines and, and you all of course can can see these various different things you know that electric fifty five one ten and water and sewer fifty five one thirty those are also things that come back into the, you know to the town and come back into the county so those are of course the expenses of us having to be in the building naturally. Um, you'll also see on here just various other things. One of the um, ones that I want you guys to look at would be for our um, repair costs for eight agency vehicles, and that's 56009, and that would be on the next page if yours looks like mine. 
and that cost right now is hovering right at eight thousand dollars. We have some we have some newer vehicles, but we have some older vehicles that are falling apart a little bit. They require more maintenance and a lot of times than what they're not necessarily worth. And as you all know from me reporting to you guys, our kids are not local. So when we're having to drive a couple of hours, we need a vehicle that's going to be reliable. Now, of course, when we're going out on CPS or adult services um, calls, those are local. So we have those vehicles that are four-wheel drive that we can get to the top of the mountain. And it's okay if you break down, you know, right here in town. I don't want my staff to break down, but right here in town is far better than being, you know, two and a half hours away or about four hours away at times. So um, we're hoping to look at um, replacing one of those vehicles before we get too far um, out of line. Um, coming on down to the next section where you all, there's no numbers here where you see auxiliary grants and TANF manual, you see any of those sections, you will see that there are several here where there is no local match required. There are several that have a local match of like say 20% for our auxiliary grants, which is right at 109, 109,000. But then there's several like TANF, 4E, um, foster care that there's no local match that's required. So that's a little bit of the, the difference with our budget and some of the other budgets that some of our money, the majority of our money um, that comes in does not require a huge local match or there's no local match required at all. Our auxiliary grant um, requests have been increasing because the population in Warren County, the age is increasing, um, as does the needs, and that money comes directly from the federal and um, state government. So, and then the local match for that is 20%. Uh, moving on along, you will see in some of these budget lines, let me just kind of even explain or say, mention something about that. If you look at the 40 foster care line, you see where that's right now at 249000 That does not have a local match, but please don't be, you know, frightened to think that, oh my goodness, all of a sudden we get, you know, 12 kids in care and the money is going to run out. If there is a reason that we need to request additional money to be able to provide our maintenance and care for those children, then we ask for that additional money. Again, there's no match to the locality for that, and we're able to receive those additional funds. So that's a, that dollar amount is all state? This is all federal, actually. And then okay. Technically, okay. it comes from the federal government to the state and then to us, so it, okay. yeah, it kind of just depends on how you want to word it. But mm -hmm. if, if there is a need, and, and there are times when we've had to ask for additional money because we've had an influx of kids or we've gone from one year where we've had you know 12 kids in care to you know now 18 kids in care we can request that additional money and if you look down at our safe and stable grant um, which is 24,267 and I believe that will be on the next page you'll see there where it has a 15 and a half percent local match that's one of the grants that we have there's another grant on here uh, for family preservation but that's one of the grants that we have where we're able to provide assistance to families um, that are in need in the county. That specific pot of money goes to help with everything from reunification for children that are in foster care to help provide services to their parents. But what we use it even more for is if there's someone that's coming in and needs a utility bill paid or you know needs medicine that for some reason isn't covered under one pot or another pot of money, or even for services for families or children that are in crisis to keep them from coming into foster care. Um, that, that specific amount of money, that 24000 is grant money um, that comes in that does have that small match of 15.5%. We don't actually get to get more money from that pot. So once that money is gone, there's, there's not, don't just request more like we can for some of our other pots in there. Um, likewise, that view purchase of services, which is right now at $104,000, that goes to our TANF population, and I apologize right now for speaking in so many acronyms, but they are the clients that will receive a check, um, and it's for our, it's to help with self-sufficiency. So we will help pay for things from training to transportation expenses, and at their times when we've even bought cars for our view clients so that they can get back and forth. Um, we have people that work here in Warren County, but we also have people that work in, you know, Frederick County and, you know, commute north. So the whole goal of, of being able to use that money is to get people to a place where they're not necessarily needing DSS assistance. What is TAM? Temporary assistance for needy families. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. And, and VIEW, where that actually says VIEW Purchase Services, the Virginia Initiative for Employment, not Welfare. Okay. We actually have, and if you all ever would like to see it or, or get you know very confused, we actually have an entire book, in essence, of nothing but acronyms. So please, I, <laughs> I was going to yeah, say, we're, we're I, I have that. I can help you out with that. We, we have, 
Yeah. That's what we have C, we have CPMT yes. and everything. Yes, we, we start speaking a foreign language every now and again. Some of them I know, some of them I don't. And the more you hear them, the more familiar they come, and then they'll change it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you'll be confused all over again. Um, that uh, Title IV-E grant of $800, that has one of the highest local matches. And what that we're using that for, what we hope to be able to use that for, is to recruit and to retain and train foster parents here in Warren County. Um, I have staff that has attended the training um, for Pride training, and we have a regional consultant that comes down and helps with that training, especially until the staff get up to par. The hardest thing is trying to get people that are interested and people that actually want to become foster parents and complete the training. Um, we've had some people that have shown interest, but then when it actually comes time for completing the training and completing the paperwork, they sometimes realize this is more than what I can bear at this time. Then likewise, there's times when we realize that their heart's in the right place, but then being a foster parent is just really not the right calling for them right now. You know, maybe we can use you to volunteer or to be a mentor, but not to necessarily be a foster parent where we don't want to have a child that's going to disrupt and then that placement is lost. I'd be happy to answer any questions or provide any so additional information. So on that first sheet, the, um, the additional local appropriation is 89057 right? That's on our sheet. Yes, I was going to say, yes, let me get my page. Yes. That's your local That's right. match. There it is. Um, it's interesting, too, because Deanna does a good job on the salary sheet, looking at all the benefits. If you look at the bot totals at the bottom, 33% of the salary cost is the benefit cost. You know, some of the other departments, you hear them talk about, well, it may be cheaper if we hire some part some part time or hire a new full time position like the elections. You got to think about that thirty three percent benefit cost, and there's there's a break even point where it's cheaper to use part time or overtime before you get into paying that, that additional mm -hmm. uh, benefit cost. But um, so that's a good job breaking that out. But you know, a good part of again, the you know, budget for the most part on local side is heavy dependent on the, um, the staffing personnel cost. The health insurance piece. Absolutely. How much was the health insurance? Uh, health numbers? insurance, uh, all total is five hundred ninety-one thousand for health and dental. So about you know, 50, fifty-nine grand or so is that ten percent increase number. Right. Uh, so out of that eighty-nine figure, that's a good chunk. Plus, you had a couple positions for the Medicaid expansion. Absolutely, that, that are now being rolled back in. For so for the last two years, when we had Medicaid expansion, the state federal government paid for that, and there wasn't um, there wasn't anything that the localities had to pay for those two positions. However, they give it, then they take it away, so now they're no longer funding those two positions. And of course, with our Medicaid numbers, I've provided some of those stats you know, in my last mm -hmm. presentation, we're still getting an influx of, of people that are applying for Medicaid, which is great, but also means that I have to have the staff and trying to you know, not just approve them, but approve them timely and as it's, well. And it's not like that the volume has dropped that you could get by say with one person rather than two. No. You still need no, to meet your timeliness not. goals. Right? Time, not just the timeliness goals of it, but then the accuracy piece of it. And there's additional programs, and I mentioned again at the presentation, where um, the state is ruling out a new ABOD program. So that's your able-bodied adults without children, without dependents. Um, so that, that's another population that we're now going to be serving, and that's not necessarily serving with additional staff or additional state money. So the requirements and the mandates of staff, just same, similar with Families First, when that'll be rolling out on July 1st, there's additional mandates. There's potentially some additional funding for that, but that's not written in stone or confirmed, but the requirements continue to increase. How many vacancies do you have? Yeah. Right, so, right now I have three. I still have the fraud position where um, we're actually having interviews for that on Friday. I still have my secretary position. And then I have one family service specialist position where the position has been offered. Um, she really wants an adult service position, and I don't have a vacancy in adult services. I have one in foster care. So I'm waiting for her response as to whether or not she'll accept it or not. And just as far as, you know, we, we were able to take one step of three in the compensation Absolutely. So if, if you see <laughs> the numbers on here, you're thinking, oh my gosh, they're actually, you know, look pretty big. You know, they're really not. Um, and I know you guys have probably already seen the salary study information. When we're looking at staff in, in last year, when you could come over to my office and literally hear an echo, my staff's leaving and going to Frederick County, my staff's leaving and going to Loudoun. And I know that we can't compete with, you know, Fairfax, you know, the country of Fairfax. I know we can't compete with those, but when I've got people that can make $10,000 and have only been with me for, you know, five or six months and can make $10,000 more, that's pretty substantial just going to Frederick yeah. County. 
Um, and you know, uh, my staff, the majority of them, I've been able to um, rehire staff that have gone, thought the grass was greener and have been able to come back. But what they're also realizing is that they're, they're higher caseloads, there's not the support, there's not the camaraderie or the teamwork when they're going to another locality. Um, and it's very siloed where my staff can walk across to, you know, benefits or benefits can walk across to, you know, services or they all can come to my office and, you know, get an answer to a question and get the client served. When you've got people in several different buildings or several different floors, you don't get that. So it is very important for me to try and keep the staff that I have. We've got a good team, but you know, it's like with anything, life circumstance changes and they're looking for that way to be able to you know, remediate that as simply and as easily as possible. And that might mean driving 15 minutes more for substantial amount. So these, these pink lines are people where you have vacancies? Yes, at the time that this was printed, they were the vacancies. Mm -hmm. Right now, the only BPS2, the only uh, FSS is the one I was just speaking about, that would be for our foster care position. The only BPS2 would be for fraud, because that's where right. that falls under, and then my secretary is. No? Any additional questions? No? Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate you time. coming in. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. To be such a bad day outside, I'm right peachy. on top. <laughs> You're peachy. The only thing that make me any happier if that was snow. Oh, uh, well, I'm too tall. Oh, uh, should have said that. Huh? <laughs> Not real. <Wow>. <laughs> Pretty good for you yeah, so far. We've got an extremely hot one or something. March is going to be tough. I hope not. It can be. Where are you, Chief? Well, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, this was a, a fairly easy budget for uh, for me, even though I have three budgets that that the fire uh, that the fire chief manages. Um, we'll start off with. Uh, 35050. Um, worked really hard to make some cuts along that to, to uh, uh, look at that 0% increase. Um, the one thing that I did do and I knew would probably be a little bit controversial was uh, ask for a part time secretary to be uh, moved to full time. Um, Is that Missy? Missy is full-time, that would be Lori. Okay. Lori is part-time and they are secretaries for everybody in the office. Their work is picked up, such as uh, um, Fire Academy work, as, as Jerry said, and I brought him in case you had some questions about that. But, um, um, you know, they're, they're doing, she's off at least one day a week, part-timer, and uh, a lot of times that's one day that the that the front office may not be covered depending on annual leave, sick leaves, and, and so forth with Missy. So uh, we've, we've asked to move that position um, full time. Um, there's always questions about the overtime. Um, I kept the request at the same as, as last year. Um, we have a minimum part-time staff uh, that fills in for the full-timers, um, you know, when they're off, the guys in the field, certainly administration doesn't, um, you know, we don't replace people in the administration when they're on annual leave or sick leave or whatever, uh, but this is to keep the minimum staffing in the field of our five stations. Can, can you augment those with any volunteers or is there just not any volunteers? Um, I wish we could. Sometimes we uh, um, uh, we do. Uh, it depends. 
Um, I, today we could have two or three people hanging around front row as an example. We could have two or three people hanging around front row, and tomorrow we we don't see anybody. It, it just it fluctuates from day to day. Um, so I'll, Chief, is there not a schedule for volunteers? I mean, you just kind of let them come and go as they they choose, or is they or they schedule? Now we say let. Remember, these are independent volunteer fire companies. So the independent companies say schedule across the their street, own volunteers, and a lot of them. I mean, they try to do duty nights where they have people show up. Some are better than others, right? At that, because I know, hear this across the board, and I'm, I'm wondering what the what the gap is in terms of how they schedule. Like. Well, the honest truth is, at nighttime, there's, there's barely any volunteers that stay at the stations any, anymore. That I guess that's a life change. Uh, it's it's a it's a new generation that has more interests in the fire department. Um, after our meeting, after our chief's meeting last night, I did stop by the front row because I had to, something I needed to talk to my captain about over there, and they actually had two, two volunteers, so they were staffed with four for the evening. Uh, they were sitting in front of a TV playing a game, but they're there. They're there. They're there, they're there, they're there to run calls. Week, yes. How about the weekends? Do you get more part time? I mean, the volunteers on the weekend. Some stations, uh, and to be honest with you, it's. Uh, um, a lot of it depends on the call. You know, the one thing that um, that has really impacted negatively that has impacted the fire department is EMS. Um, the training is more for EMS. The recertification is more than you know than for fire. Um, you get an EMS call, you're tied to an ambulance. So, uh, I mean, even here, a minimum of. Uh, of, of an hour, you know, to, to tra uh, treat, transport to the hospital, replace your equipment, and, and get back in service. And um, if if we have to go to Winchester because of uh, whatever that uh, medical call is uh, that Warrant uh, Memorial can't handle, then it's two and a half or three hours that they're gone. Um, and to be honest with you, uh, it scares me to death because sometimes, you know, we only have one medic. Uh, on board, they're taking a um, a heart attack or a, or a stroke, uh, which which Warren Memorial won't take, and you know they're out of the county for two and a half, three hours sometimes. Matter of fact, we took a we took a um, a stroke to Winchester the other morning at four o'clock in the morning. So you can imagine how long that was. <laughs> We have, and, and Doug, Doug did allude that, you know, every company is their own entity, so to speak, uh, uh, and they have their own rules and, and, res, uh, uh, and regulations for their people, and it's, it's different from company to company. We don't have, we, we have very little to do with that other than to making sure that, uh, that they, you know, that they get their training, they're offered their training. Um, and they meet those requirements to, to be eligible to, to operate. I, I have volunteered to be on the, your committee, and that's one thing that um, when we meet, like February, I look forward to brainstorming with all you guys and the chiefs of all the companies and see what we can what we can figure out because I you know I look at other counties I was talking to some of the other um, supervisors from other counties and um, you know volunteerism is down but a lot of counties are still functioning with all volunteer staff so I think we need to reach you know look out and talk to people and try to figure it out so we can augment with, with more volunteers if at all possible so you know nothing ventured nothing gained is it at this point well, one, we appreciate you. You got out last night. What an opportunity! To thank you for coming last night. I think that helped uh, help these guys understand uh, um, a little bit about you know the, uh, your thoughts and the board's thoughts on the project we discussed last mm -hmm. night. And, yeah, I uh, rushed out because I was trying to get the town council meeting. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I did notice they were, had a full parking lot, a full yeah, parking yeah. lot when I came by here, but. Uh, um, most everything else uh, here is uh, it's either um, it's either established by um, you know the, 
the benefits and so forth are uh, established by formula. We cut uh, our operation of motor vehicles. Uh, we cut that uh, by $5,000. Most everything else we either kept the same or or we cut. And the estimated health insurance was 37000 and the salary increase is given last October over seventy two. That's over one hundred. That's that's his $98,000 increase for the fire budget. Those two items are all right. Mm -hmm. the day. I have um, a question. Volunteer accident life insurance is up $12,000. If we have less volunteers, I, I don't, can somebody explain that to me? <laughs> Yeah, why is it? Why did it go up so much? Well, my guess is it's like any other kind of insurance. You use it, you uh, yeah. you increase it. You have increases in your premiums, and um, but you, you also know, the, is, the volunteer numbers are being reported by the individual companies to you. Yes, yeah. well, we get them also from the insurance carrier, so we're able to monitor and uh, and we investigate every injury um, and so forth. But uh, so injuries uh, impact this number. Yes. Okay. And also, also it would be the number of people that you're insuring, right? Uh, of course. So and, now is that um, just for volunteers, or is this, that paid and volunteers? No, ma'am. This, this is this is just for the volunteers, this and this volunteer. is actually something new that we uh, we did um, four or five years ago. Um, we we not only do we insure them um, with coverage that's similar to workers' comp, you know, it, it excellent coverage to start with. And uh, but, you, but you. Um, we're also insure their buildings and the vehicles and this, that, and the other. So we've done a lot of things in the last few years um, using funds to help out to, uh, I like to say, to, to help them with that one big thing a lot of them complain about, and that's doing bingo or other fundraisers uh, and so forth. Is there any other questions on on uh, three five zero five zero? The next one is thirty two thousand. Um, it's actually uh, uh, takes care of the contributions that we do make to the uh, individual companies um, every year. Uh, we also have um, insurance coverage here, and maybe, did you get that off of this one? Or the, In the volunteer one is back on, um, it's 32000 it's 32000 Yeah, yeah. I see, yeah, okay. of that one. so we've already talked about that yeah. one just now, okay, uh, my apologies. Um, and pretty much we tried to stay, we weren't put, uh, I think $5,000 over what, uh, uh, what our projected expenditures were, but well, we've got some things in here too that uh, that are kind of out of our control, if you will. Uh, the fire, uh, forest fire extension, even though that's not a lot of money, it uh, we have to estimate what we think that figure will come in from the state. And what they do is they uh, they estimate how many uh, acres of woodland that we have in the county, and they charge us per acre. Uh, and that's every that's every county, and not a lot of money, as you see. Equipment service contracts we keep uh, 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 maintenance on our radio system infrastructure. Um, most of our portables and uh, and uh, uh, mobiles in the in the apparatus is is old enough now that we can't get maintenance on them any longer. So really, this what this maintenance here is is the infrastructure we just upgraded um, um, our uh, repeater sites with uh, with new equipment that had uh, um, had gotten out of you know they're they're calling over all over the country for parts and actually uh, uh, what they had told us that you know there's some parts they can't get that we would lose our radio system for an unknown amount of time if this particular part failed. So uh, so we went ahead and took the opportunity since they were um, doing work on the sheriff's office radio. Uh, real quick history lesson was back uh, uh, probably 12, 
14 years ago, we, we designed our radio system. We designed it so that the sheriff's office at any time could come over. At the time, they were renting radio uh, equipment and coverage from a private vendor in the county. Mr. Gardio, so you mm -hmm. question is there. Right. And uh, they've since now, was it last year, I think, uh, we upgraded one of our tower sites on High Knob, and they came over um, on our, not on our frequency, but they're, they're using our tower site and uh, um, the actual infrastructure that's out there because it was designed for them to come over to start with. So I noticed on, and we'll probably get there, but when you said high enough, $40,000 propane, um, was, was that a propane amount or what, did you buy? A generator and that's generator and propane cost. Well, that was a tower site that uh, is a new tower site for us to use, and we actually started uh, started at, at, at zero. We had to put a, uh, a building uh, for for the radio equipment to be stored in, and uh, it was a generator. So we had nothing up there, you know. Okay. So we started right at ground zero. The radio. Uh, a building to put our radio equipment and the sheriff's office in there. Um, uh, the the buried, emergency generator. Buried tank. Yeah, we had to uh, put a, a whole tank and everything in there. Yeah, so okay. that. Well, I saw that night. I've got a big generator at my house, and I was like, "Holy cow! I don't spend that kind of money on it." So I figured that it must have been more than pro. Right. Right. And as I go down. Most of this, like I said, is contributions to uh, the companies. Um, Lord Fairfax EMS Council is um, that figure I used because that's the that was the board approval for Lord Fairfax EMS Council in past years. Um, them being an outside agency, y'all govern that, and we just plug it into our our budget. Um, now down here where it says fire programs fund. EMS um, emergency services support cost recovery are those is that all revenue yes ma'am okay so the cost recovery what was that for a short time period does it the 35,000 what where do you uh, on 3,200 are showing oh. revenue on the volunteer oh. side 35,750 is that for some reimbursements to the fire company? Yeah, it's, well, it's reimbursements. Then you got it here, um, too. Right. Um, <clears throat> let me, another little history <laughs> lesson. Um, years ago, when we, we, we thought of, uh, of looking for alternative funding methods, all right, and we decided that, hey, let's pursue cost recovery, which is, uh, uh, charging for ambulance service, charging mm -hmm. for transports, okay, as a method of, uh, of raising some more revenue that, uh, you know, it keeps us from coming to the board for certain things and all, and uh, EMS equipment and funds, and when I get over to cost recovery, I'll outline some of those for you. Um, part of the agreement that we made with the board back then, and I, I should have I should know, but uh, I'm going to say 10 years ago, and it may be more. I can get back with you on that. Uh, the board approved the cost recovery, but in that um, in that agreement was hiring four more firefighters to put across the street to give them 24. That was the first of our 24-hour stations. Was the front wall. They had two uh, firefighters, and uh, the board gave. I will say the board gave us. They approved us to hire four more, but they, the board gets, uh, the, the personnel costs get reimbursed for, uh, for that amount recovery. of money. Yes. In addition, Rick Farrell's position. Gets Rick Farrell's position is in that since he was the manager of the cost recovery. So if you look at the fire and rescue so department forth. at the bottom, cost recovery two seventy four nine fifty. That's covering the cost of those four positions in the field plus Rick Farrell's salary costs. Okay. Yeah, so, I, don't, I don't have that. I'm so apologize. Cost recovery I don't have that on money. Money goes back in just to the EMS system. Yes. Well, it goes back into the fire department. There are some things on the fire side we may, you know, have to buy. But for the most part, that has purchased us uh, five new ambulances. Um, they, uh, 
that we almost every year we we another savings that we feel for the volunteers because at that time they purchased their own ambulances. Well, an ambulance today costs two hundred forty thousand dollars, and uh, so what we do is uh, we we have every company in the county is now riding on our Warren County Fire and Rescue EMS license. So that uh, that allows us to put in grants for all those companies, and that's what we've been doing for the last five or six years. And we've purchased we purchased five, maybe six ambulances that these companies wouldn't have to purchase. And we're getting, for most parts, we're getting them on grants. You know, that cuts it in half. At the very least is a 50-50 grant. Um, right now, we we're looking at uh, replacing. London's company fours this year and next year and it depends on too what, what kind of year we have on the cost recovery because we, we can't estimate people are going to be sick and who's going to be transported. Um, but we may end up replacing company threes as well. That's another one that's almost 20 years old uh, and it's starting to cost us some big money in maintenance. But those are the kind of things we put um, and another example is we, we uh, entered into a lease purchase with uh, Physio Control and we put all new life pack 15s in every, uh, in the ambulances, you know, because uh, the old uh, AEDs and life packs were, were all out of, they get out of service quick, if they, if, I shouldn't say this on the record, but it's kind of a gimmick, you know. Any, Any questions? Let me hit cost recovery real quick. I mean, we've covered a lot of it. Um, the administrative fees are, are we hired a, a company to do our billing. Uh, it was just not cost effective for us to try to do it in-house. So, so they do that and they charge us a, a certain percentage. Uh, um, um, and we soft bill, meaning we send a bill, say if we transport Ms. Colors, if your insurance company doesn't pay, we don't go back and We write it off, yes. And over the, over the last uh, uh, lifespan of the program, we've written off millions. <laughs> but collected millions more. We've collected millions more, yeah. The operational motor vehicles here is the uh, ambulances. Uh, uh, again, we, we uh, since we bought them under our license, um, we actually uh, um, are, are owning those, so we maintain them. You know, so another savings for the volunteer companies. Um, really, that's that's about it. Unless you got any more questions. Uh, you know about can you hit an unclassified thing yeah. is that just a miscellaneous item that you need to purchase you it, got like 10 grand in here well, it going. covers well we can't uh, especially on the EMS side we can't cover a lot of stuff right you know at the beginning of the year because we don't know what's going to break down and whatever that's, that's mainly what we put that in there for to make sure that we had a budget item and charge those kind of things too that we needed that that weren't uh, uh, listed above. Okay, does that, I take it that that's one of those fees that goes into a pool? I mean, well, again, it like kind of like the sheriff's tarp or somebody else's tarp example, if you've got something that doesn't fit one of the other categories, if it's a motor vehicle repair, it goes under motor vehicles, right. if it's something that doesn't fit one of the other categories, typically it goes in a classified line. I, but you're not building, cheaper. you're not building a dollar amount for a uh, a project or no, something, no, something no, along it, that line. In that case, it's if you don't now for cost recovery, any unspent money at the end of the year gets rolled into special projects and sits there because that money specifically goes. The fire companies want to know it's going for fire and rescue. We're not, that was one of the big concerns. Right. We would take that money and spend it on a landfill or spend it on parks and rec. No, it gets spent for fire and rescue. That's kind of what I'm getting at. Was there, was there a um, special projects fund for the fire department. There is. Well, don't you yes. have a fund yeah. for your burn building? Well, 
that uh, these are some big projects we have coming up last night I'll, I'll give you a heads up it'll be coming to the board here in the next couple of weeks that um, um, running an emergency services organization is not cheap um, we have got ourselves into uh, all of every one of our air packs our CBAs is is out of date um, we're piecemealing them together with used parts off of other air packs and so forth. So we put in for a grant, or going to put in for a grant, if y'all agree, um, that um, we're talking about outfitting every company in the county. We're taking the responsibility and the lead for it. And um, uh, the grant through the federal government would if it all works out, we're asking for 105 air packs for every company um, to have the new air packs with new bottles, new face pieces, and so forth. And we will take 100, uh, our portion will end up being right around $150,000 if we're lucky enough to get the grant. And so that money was setting in special projects from fire programs. You asked for, somebody asked about the fire programs money early. Well, it, that money has to go into the fire department. That's a, a state requirement. And the money we do not spend is, um, is put into special projects. Because I have to account for that. I get audited every year on the fire programs money and the EMS fund. Um, so that's an example of what we do with the special projects money that we don't spend. Cost recovery is pretty much the same. You know, we may not budget for an ambulance this year, but we have it in special projects where we can, you know, put it in there. So I'm, I'm kind of proud of the fact that since we started this, that we haven't been back to the board and asked for any money for any of this, this stuff. We're actually using the money that the fire department is raising. I, I shouldn't say raising is, is, is well, we are raising. You're generating. Sure. You're generating, yeah. yeah. Now, the part he didn't tell you about the breathing apparatus without the grant, the grant pays for almost a million, well, the grant is a million dollar grant. And to get that 105, what all he said, comes right under a million. 995,000, so, yeah. yeah. So if they don't get the grant, they still have to have that equipment because what they have is Obsolete. inadequate. inadequate. It's not safe. So if we get a fireman that goes in a building and it doesn't work, we have an issue. And I didn't. I didn't want to necessarily bother y'all with putting in that because we're going to get back together and we're going to we're going to give you a couple of options of what to do. The the bottom line is that the companies can't afford it. Okay. If if you need the air packs, so are you going to ask the county to buy them, then wait on the grant and possibly give them give the million dollars back to the county or? How is that going to work? Well, if you, you can't pay for them first. They won't. You won't get the grant. You'll right. forfeit the grant. But the grant the comes by We're, April first. Uh, okay. This is an accelerated grant period, so we should know something by, um, I think April thirtieth is their tentative award date for the AFG grant. So we'll know something pretty quick if we get the grant or not. Well, the concern would be, are you? Are you guys safe with their air packs that are existing now? We're making it work now. Okay, I mean, and, and one thing that's we've the done idea. too is we've uh, what this will do for us is, is we're requiring, and I, and I don't want to take up a whole lot of time, but each company agreed last night unanimously to enter into a, a, an MOU with the county or with the fire department uh, that we will own them. So that means again in the future we will maintain them and all too. So it'll be our responsibility. To, to make sure that they stay in service uh, and stay serviceable and so forth. And that, once again, is where this fire program money comes in because that's another expenditure that the state approves to use that money for. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to put together, because while we feel really good about this grant, and Jerry has put a lot of work into talking to other jurisdictions that have uh, asked for these air packs and so forth so we kind of modeled our uh, request after some of those just using our numbers and we feel good about it but we've also learned that it doesn't mean anything when it comes to awarding, awarding the grant um, 
and I'm just sure. um, telling y'all how to do your business, but any call to a state senator might be. Yeah, but they have some, they kind yeah. of have a little bit too. Uh. Yeah, we'll talk to senator's office. Matt <laughs> Weather and say, remember, we're running your call area. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. 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 Well, I appreciate you coming in, and I know the board does too. Well, I, I'm sorry I took so much time, but sometimes it's uh, just kittens time. We don't, you don't need us. You don't know a whole lot about us, so we want to make sure that you do. So we appreciate it. It's your last time anyway. Thank you, sir. I'll have one more. I hope. Plus, you have mandatory retirement. Yes, yeah, but I don't turn in December. But there'll be one more budget. Uh, well, yeah. He's got to put it together. Dude, in December. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get rid of <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have a nice day. Uh -huh.